Hey everybody, welcome back to Trollcast. This is episode three. Uh, I'm Sean. And I'm Seth. Um, in this episode, we're actually going to be talking about the inception and the creation of the band Trawl. Um, some people may know us from different areas of the music scene or our personal lives, um, but they may not know exactly how we came together. Um, and really, the best person to start this story, I think, would be Yousef, because yeah. Trawl is kind of your baby. It's, it's, it's your brainchild, so... <laughs> Let, let's let people know, like, kind of how you came up with, you know, the path to Trawl. Sure. I think I got to start with a band that without this band, there would be no Trawl. And without this band, you and I might not have ever crossed paths or met. So I'm talking about, without a doubt, I'm talking about Loki. Um, Loki is a band that I was in for about seven years. Um, I started in that band in about 2007. I think I came in in like spring of 2007. Uh, Shout out to my my friends and brothers, John Boyer, Adam Nichols, John Taylor, who was the singer of the band for a long time, Uh, John and uh, John Boyer and Adam are still in the band and still going strong with uh, Mike Lubier, who's the, who's the bass player, who's the original bass player. Uh, Actually, I think he just announced that he was leaving the band too. So he did. Yeah. So it's an interesting time for, for, for us and uh, you know, and for the music scene um, because we all had to cancel some shows recently and they just had to cancel what was going to be their last show with Mike. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw, we'll talk more about this later, but we had to cancel what was going to be our last show with our guitar player, Tom. Um, so, And not to graze over it, but we do, we do really hope Mike, um, we wish him all the best. Phenomenal bass player, great guy overall. Awesome guy. Um, I mean, I've known him for probably close to 20 years now. <laughs> um, so... We wish him all the best and, and, and good luck in any future endeavors that he does go on. So so after I started in the band, shortly after, I think it was one of my first shows with Loki, I met Sean. I want to say it was maybe at the Asylum or somewhere like that. Um, I can't remember, but it's not the Asylum most people remember, but it's the old Asylum with the shaggy red carpet on the stage and <laughs> the, the not so nice and shiny asylum. <laughs> yeah, the 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 fake stars in the ceiling. Um, I don't know if it was at the asylum or maybe the station. It might have been the station. Yeah, one of those two places. I, I know. Um, so a quick insert there is: I actually um, lived with one of the drummers of Loki before Adam, um, Kevin Harrington, and uh, he joined Loki and I kind of became a roadie for Loki. So I got to go to their old jam spot, which was uh, the, the landscaping business that they were practicing in after hours. (laughs) Um, And it was their roadie for a few years. And then I kind of went my own way. And then Seth kind of came in behind me. So, you know, we kind of inadvertently were, two ships crossing that didn't even really register at first, but then the first meeting is at one of those shows. Yeah. One of and, those uh, shows. And so like right around the time I started in Loki, I moved down to Portland actually with John Taylor, who was the, the longtime singer. And uh, at the time um, we were, we lived together. Uh, John Boyer, our guitar player lived downstairs and this was back in the days of blockbuster and so I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really know anybody in town. I, I wasn't other than going, uh, other than playing shows, I wasn't really venturing out too much. And so every Friday night after I got out of work, I'd head down to Blockbuster and I ran into Sean. Um, yep. Yeah. 
For all of you kids out there, you young whippersnappers, Blockbuster was Netflix before Netflix, except you had to go in store and actually get a DVD or video game in person. So, <laughs> which was actually like a fun adventure in and of itself because it like made you go out. Absolutely. And, like, you're talking to other people about like what they like. It was an event, dude. It was an event. And, you know, that's really how we, I think you know we might have run into each other at a show or two but that's how we got to know each Mm -hmm. other was like talking about movies and just you know shooting the breeze about all different stuff and well i I remember you coming in and and i'd be like hey hey seth what's going on man you're like hey dude what's up and like you'd go and like pick out a movie or something and and like come up to the counter and i know my brother-in-law and i worked together there so we'd both be kind of sitting there just talking and hanging out at blockbuster and like really got to kind of know just the surface Seth, like seeing some of the movies you rented and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it was kind of fun to, to get to know somebody that I knew played music. I'd seen you on stage a few times um, with Loki and it was definitely like, okay, this guy is a phenomenal bassist. And like, thank you, man. You know, we, we kind of have this connection with Loki. So like, I want to kind of make friends with him because he seems like a really nice guy. Like, and it kind of, again, was one of those things where we got to be friendly towards each other, but we were definitely acquaintances. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We were acquaintances with, at that point. And, um, right. Yeah. So, you know, I spent about seven years in that band, you know, we got to do so many cool things. We, like I said, we mentioned a few of the clubs we played at. I got to mention like places like the big easy and port city music hall and, Place, but um, further up north, like Bridge Street Tavern and uh, mainly Brews, and um, we got to play the, the classic, all the classic places that most of them are no longer around. Um, but it definitely represented the music scene for a long time in Maine, and I had some mm-hmm. like definitely formative experiences. Um, I owe the Loki guys so much for teaching me a lot about being in a band and about songwriting amazing songwriters um i i love that material i still think about that band every day honestly you know i listen to those songs all the time i'm really proud of the work that we did um i got to make three albums or eps if you want to call them uh while i was in the band and just you know super proud of what we were able to do in those days um but it's definitely was my introduction to the music scene in a big way. I'd been in a few other bands before that, um, but not never to that extent um, where we played all over New England. We even played, you know, New York and Connecticut a couple times. Don't know how to do more, but it's too late. You start to break from there. have been able to be possible without those formative experiences in that that time um so after loki i took about a year off and basically i'll explain it was kind of a personal thing i just i was working a job that was bringing me all over the place all over maine um all the way up to arista county and um I didn't have time for a little while for music. I kind of got to the point where um, I wasn't able to be as committed as I wanted to be. And I was also trying to go back to college. So 
all of that was happening at once. I took a year off from music and that year was one of the toughest years I ever had because I realized that, you know, regardless of what you make money doing, you know, your passion is always important to your life. And it, and it really, you know, helps to keep everything together. And as far as your personal happiness goes, you know, regardless of money or anything, like your passion is truly important. And I, lo- I almost lost that for one year. And I was absolutely, you know, sad, kind of losing my mind. Um, so I decided to, to look at what was out there a year later and try to come back to music. Um, in that, I will say yeah. too, though, is like when you, um, seeing Loki at that time and seeing you in the band and Adam and Boyer and JT and like, you know, the, the, the way you guys work together and we're on stage together, it, it, it was something that was, it was very magical. It was very fun to watch. And then hearing that you decided to step away from the band, like I think a lot of people were shocked by that because like for me personally, I was like, why is Seth leaving? Like, oh my God, like him and Boyer basically bounce off each other and add them on the drums. And, you know, just the way it all flowed, you guys almost seemed like an unstoppable machine. And uh, definitely hearing that, I I know for a lot of people, it was a big shock. And I, I mean, personally for me, like I said, I was very like, I, I hope he's doing something else. Like, I hope he's got a super secret project in the works or something like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That was at a time when, you know, I was really trying hard to, you know, kind of do what I thought I should do. No one should ever give up their passion. If, you, if you're super passionate about painting or singing or riding bikes, like do it, do it with all you have, Absolutely. you know, don't let anyone take that from you. Yeah. And it was also a lesson in, you know, not, not conforming, being able to say like, I'm going to do this no matter what, no matter what sacrifices I have to make to make it work, I'm going to do this. So um, after I, basically I decided after a year, I'm going to come back and um, some friends of mine in the band Fifth Freedom, who were friends for a long time. We played a ton of shows together in the Loki days. We probably played easily 20 shows together, probably more. Um, They had just come off from touring the country with the band Blackstone Cherry. They got a really cool break. They got a chance to go and be on, I think it was Lou Brutus's hard drive tour, which goes like all along the Midwest and like the South and, it's a huge tour and they came back and um, their bassist um, Scarpo, who's also a good friend of mine, Mike Scarpelli, he left the band and fifth freedom had like 10 shows on the books and they had a summer lined up and they were like, all right, now what are we going to do? So I got the call and I was going to fill in for the summer and a hired gun. And yeah, <laughs> so I was going to fill in for the summer. I'm like, yeah, I'll try this out. And if you haven't heard Fifth Freedom, it's like kind of a blues rock, southern rock type of uh, music, which is a little different than Loki. It's definitely a different pace, a different different style of music. But I was like, you know what? These guys are great. It's, you know, f- friends of mine. I really want to give this a shot. So I started and gave it probably three or four shows. And they were like, yeah, you know, you're not leaving, right? And I'm like... Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll stay. And, um, <laughs> they basically put handcuffs on yeah. you, and they were like, "No, you're staying." <laughs> but, but shout out to Alan Jones. Shout out to my buddy Ian Dyer. And I don't know if you guys, some of you guys may know, some of you guys may not, but Gary Marston, our drummer in Troll, was the drummer in Fifth Freedom. Just the best dude. Um, awesome dad, awesome guy. He's like happy go lucky. Yeah. He's like Gary is 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 one of those people that when you get to know him, you realize he's like a he's such a giant kid. Like he's so energetic and sometimes he can misconstrue things or misunderstand things, but we all do that, but he does it not necessarily out of spite. He just does it because He's so energetic that sometimes his brain gets, you know, jumbled up. <laughs> and he's um, very, I, and that's, he's very protective of his friends. He will defend absolutely everybody. He is, uh, 
He's I mean, one of my, you know, he's always he's, encouraging to he's me. He's a great guy. Such a good dude. He's really, yeah. I mean, there's no better way of putting it. He, he's, he's a great guy. Um, I mean, a heart of gold with a mind full of rocks sometimes, but we love him <laughs> for that. You know, and Uncle Gary, Uncle he Gary. gets a few drinks in him. Yeah, that comes <laughs> out and it's okay. <laughs> and uh, also a great drummer. Um, Fantastic. He, yeah. he hits hard. He the, what's cool about Gary is he he listens to everything. Like he's one of those guys yeah. that listens to the, like the radio at work, and he pretty much listens to just about everything on the radio. So like he uh-huh. he's kind of a I don't I don't know what you call it, but like he's almost like a student of all these different styles and different eras that like um, just give him an amazing amount of reference points for playing different styles of music. And I found that early on um, when we started trawl uh that you know he's just got yeah. all these different reference points um, well and, and not only his reference points but he's i mean he's a minute or two older than us yeah it happens yeah, absolutely. Uh, but he, he's been playing drums for forever and you know looking at his influences and and talking with him and like just hanging out with him the guy has just a one of the purest loves of drumming i've ever seen like he wants to get better, but he's not worried about being perfect. He just wants to have fun while he's doing it. Yeah. Um, Gary's all and, about and, and him playing drums. Absolutely, he's all about I mean, just having fun. Ugh. He's like, I think for him, it's like an outlet to get the get the rage out. Get the you know he'll like have a bad the frustrations. Like, yeah, I need to play drums. Yeah, <laughs> I need to beat skins. <laughs> but I mean, watching him play drums, he can make like a three piece kit sound like a 45 piece kit. And an you know, he, he, he may have broken symbols, but you'd never know it when he hits it. He just knows that spot, that one spot. And that symbol will just shine through everything. And I mean, he, he, he that's the best way. Yeah. He's an animal, <laughs> absolute beast. Absolutely. So, so in fifth freedom, you know, I started in like the summer of 2015. Um, we played shows for that whole summer and then we decided we were going to write an album. So we, we actually wrote um, an album called Heartbreak and Hellfire, which came out the next year. It ended up being just this. It kind of blindsided us. It ended up being like one of the most successful projects I've ever been a part of. It, it, um, we released it and we did an uh, almost sold out um, CD release party at Empire and we were just blown away by the reception of it. Um, we recorded it um, with uh, John Wyman and we had Adam Iron from Gateway Mastering master it and it came out super well. Uh, John and Adam have done a lot of the Loki material as well. So I was already really comfortable uh, and honestly, with them. If, if anyone gets a chance to hear that album, it is phenomenal. The, the sound of the guitars, the drums, the vocals, the bass, everything super crisp and super clear. Uh, And the album's solid front to back. Like Thank there's you. very few tracks on there that you, you want to skip. Like you want to listen to the whole thing. So it's a great album. And uh, I, I applaud you guys for putting that out because I know how much hard work goes into writing stuff and especially putting out a full length album of the sorts is 
Thank you, man. More work than I've done in a long time. So <laughs> yeah, we were very proud of it, and you know, so many people helped to make it happen. It was awesome. I mean, we we just had a time when you know um, at Bull Moose it did really well. You know, it, it hit number one on the local charts for like twenty five plus weeks over the course of about a year, and ended up becoming like the number one selling local album of the year in 2016. It made the top 25 of the decade for Bull Moose. So we were just like super blown away by the reception. It could have literally sold 10 copies or did what it did. And we, we honestly, like we made it for ourselves. We, but we're so glad that people actually took to it and liked it. Um, but yeah. um, well, you can hear that, that you guys wrote something that you guys liked, you know, you wanted to write and you can definitely hear in the musicianship and like seeing you guys do that hellfire, you know, like tour, I guess you would call it yeah. like you could definitely tell there was still a lot of passion and, and you know, like appreciation for the songs you had written for that album. Yeah. And we we really came together, I think, as a, as a unit, but I have to give. Um, you know, Alan and Gary credit, they had, they had been in that band playing together for many years and through a few other lineups with Scarpo and uh, Nick and it, you know, they did a lot of work before I got there and before Ian got there. So, you know, they deserve a lot of credit for, you know, kind of bringing that to the point. But I think when the four of us came together, we just kind of hit this, stride that um was was a really fun time you know some fun years playing music Mm -hmm. however it um before i get into that i want to talk about tom mishu a little bit um because tom was our guitar tech and our bass tech and he was an awesome friend to us in fifth freedom he was always super helpful moving gear helping us intonate our instruments heartbreak and hellfire would have sounded a whole lot different without tom because he intonated like 15 guitars because ian dyer is like a guitar (laughs) collector and he wanted to bring like so many guitars every guitar (laughs) you know he had like a double neck gibson with the, the 12 string up top and Literally, yeah, like, but man, watching him play that was insane, man. I'll yeah. tell you, it blew my mind. I thought that was just something Cheap Trick did, but damn. Man, <laughs> Ian, I love Ian, man. He's he's a great guitar player, great guy. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> So unfortunately, the band came to an end and not the best way. Um, But after a little time, all of us have been able to speak and and be friends. And honestly, I have no ill will or no um, bad feelings about my experience. I think it was an awesome time in my life and I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, Uh, you, you know. Any of those type of situations when a band splits, whether it's amicably or very nastily, um, you got to take some time to, to kind of unwind and release any tensions and, you know, frustrations or, you know, anything like that to try to make, if you proceed with a new project, like you got to make it a happy beginning and, and a clean slate for yourself you know, because you don't want to bring anything into a new band um, that you're harboring that, you know, could be negative or could be, you you know, you always did this. So you expect it to be this way because getting into a group of, you know, four five, six guys, depending on the size of your band, that, you know, that's different dynamics every time. Absolutely. So I agree. And so I started thinking about, you know, 
what I wanted to do with music. And I was at a point where, you know, I'd been part of these two bands that were really important to me, Loki and Fifth Freedom, that both had been bands for a long time before I joined. They had both been long established and I kind of came in as, you know, the second bass player and helped them get through some more years and make some more albums and everything. But I had never really had the experience where I got to start something from the ground up, you know, with no preconceived notion of what the style of music had to be or, you know, what this sounds like and you have to make it sound like this or, um, right. And not that, you know, Loki and Fifth Freedom were both very democratic bands and they were both great as far as letting me be me and, and play my style. Um, but at the same time, you know, when as soon as you create music, it kind of becomes something and you want to make sure you're serving and, you know, giving respect to what that's become. So my idea for Trawl was, you know, let's make a band from scratch and just make it something new whatever we want to do with it and all these riffs and things i've been playing for years that really didn't have a place i'd bring it to a practice or something and it was just kind of weird or off or you know different or just a little too quirky i'm like you know what maybe this is that band this is the time when i can just like geek out and be as crazy as i want to be on the bass and kind of helped build things around that. Um, and the first thing I thought about was, I want to play music with my friends. I want to play music with some people that I know and love that I don't have to necessarily, you know, I don't want to go out there on Craigslist or something and just like try to find some dudes and like, put together <laughs> some that stuff is like it takes so much I'd, I'd rather work with people that I know are a really good dudes and solid musicians so I thought of... well, and, and doing the Craigslist thing you could get somebody who could come in and they're you know phenomenal musician but oh yeah by the way they've got a really bad heroin addiction or they have this weird porn addiction that you, you, you got to deal with all of a sudden like you don't yeah. know what you're getting necessarily when you find a random person on like a craigslist or a facebook kind of you know group you uh, really don't you really don't and if there's anything that you know both of us i'm sure have learned over the years it's like having playing music with good people that you know are good people is just as important as their music ability because it only works for yeah. a very short period of time if people it's, it's a you know it's a hand in hand thing if, if you're not dealing with people that you can you know get along with outside of music you know you got to have that and you got to be able to know that these guys are, are solid musicians um it, it's definitely something that's gotta it really has to click together like a cog piece you know absolutely so i knew i wanted to play music with gary because we had sort of been talking ever since, you know, the, the air had cleared with Fifth Freedom and we we're like, all right, you know, rhythm section's got to stick together. Like, what are we going <laughs> to do? Gary's like, just tell me where to be and I'll be there. He's one of those guys that like, just tell me where to show up and I'll show up there. I'm like, hey, Gary, yeah. we're, playing a, we're playing a gig on the yeah. moon tomorrow. I'll be there. He might be late, uh, but he'll be there. I, I'll be, I got to get my hair cut first. Yeah, yeah, Gary, you don't have any hair, buddy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, he's he's never never stood us up. He's always been no a man. Bit late, but he might be a little bit late, but I'll tell you, he shows up and he looks fresh and he drums like a fucking fifteen year old. You know, he does. full of energy <laughs> and just beats the hell out of those drums. Yeah, and so I had never been. Um, I had seen Tom play guitar a few times, but. Um, I had obviously never been in a band with Tom or anything, but I just knew he's a great friend of mine. I really want to play music with Tom. So I, I ran up by him and he's, he had been in, I think he had a, a, a project in college that they played for a little bit, but hadn't really played to any length as far as like gigging or anything, but he's like, heck yeah, man, let's do this thing. So we started jamming and I think Tom and I jammed 
twice and this is in the spring of or yeah spring of 2018 so not very long ago and then i had thrown it out there i said we're looking for a singer i knew i wanted to work with somebody that i hoped i would know and that you know from the scene that but i just didn't know who was looking because Mm -hmm. as you guys as you guys know sean has another band um devil's night out and I didn't know that if he was looking for a second project or anything. So it, it, it didn't immediately occur to me that like he was available to, and he would want to do this, but I had thrown it out there and Sean responded and said, yeah, I'll come down and jam. So, and, yeah, I think that's what really caught my eye is I saw that you were starting a new project. And I think if I remember correctly, the post was some of the effect, like, Hey, we're looking for a vocalist to come jam with us. Um, nothing serious at first you know it was kind of like a like a dating ad almost yeah, like, you know <laughs> and, we'll take it slow we'll get yeah. some pizza we'll you know <laughs> well, maybe you know hold hands but um no but that's what that's what caught my eye i was like okay i you know i've been doing devil's night out at that point for two or three years and uh it it, it was just something like i love devil's night out it's definitely still one of my passions but I was kind of like thinking to myself, like as soon as I saw your post, it was like, I could do this and I really want to jam with Seth. I wonder who else he's gotten, you know, who else is this project has got because I definitely want to jam with Seth, even if it's just, and I, I, I excuse me, uh, I said to my girlfriend, Kara, I was like, you know, Seth's starting a new band. And she goes, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go jam with him. And she goes, oh, that's that's awesome. Go do it. And and that's She's I think always the, so encouraging. It's just awesome. Yeah, well, <laughs> sometimes you know, it's like you know, you could tell me no sometimes. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. I, I sent you a message, and I'm like, hey man, like I'd love to come jam with you guys. Like I'm super excited to, to just be able to play with you. And you were like, oh yeah, man, that sounds great. You know, like do you you want to come do some like covers or something? I was like, yeah, sure. Like, what do you got? Hit me. And you literally were like, them bones, Alice in Chains. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got this. I knew that one because I, I was I, like, that's one that Loki played for a while. So yeah, I knew it. I knew that Tom could learn that one pretty easily because it's it's a fairly, like, it's one of those pretty straightforward songs for the right. most part. Um, and then the other one, though, was a little harder, <laughs> oh, um, which was um, Audio Slave uh, Kochi Switch. Yeah. We were talking about it a little bit last episode with Chris Cornell. I mean, he's just, you know, Chris Cornell's kind of an alien, so. Yeah. Well, and so you gave me these two songs. Now, mind you, I think it was, I want to say, a week or two um, between me messaging you and the day I was coming to jam with you. And uh, my previous employer... Um, I was walking around in the warehouse. I, I worked in a warehouse with one other guy and we kind of were at opposite ends at all times of the day, but he came down one day, this was probably three or four days into getting the songs that we were going to play together. And he's like, would you just shut the hell up? <laughs> oh my God. I've heard the same two songs for like 16 hours this week. Like you need to shut the hell up. Oh my God. And that's all I did for like, a week or two was seeing them bones followed by Cochise. And, and for me, like if you've ever heard me sing, like I am not that Chris Cornell kind of uh, level, like our range. And I was trying my damnedest to try to figure out how I was going to do this and pull it off. And it wasn't even necessarily that I was trying to think like I'm going in for a tryout. It was more of like, I just want to go have fun and jam these two songs but I want to do it to the best of my ability so that this, if this is the only time I jam with these guys and they're like, Hey, that was cool, but we're going to go with this guy who we've worked with before, you know, no offense. Like I wouldn't have been heartbroken. I'd have been like, all right, that's cool. I still got the jam with Seth. And that was literally one of the things that I think was my main goal was just to come in and jam with you and, and do these songs, some form of justice. <laughs> Dude. Thanks man. You did like, honestly, both of them sounded awesome. And I remember hearing, in the bridge of Cochise, there's this awesome Cornell scream 
and you just absolutely <laughs> slay it. I think you can. I think you held it out longer than he does, and I'm just like, holy shit. Like, I'm pretty sure I lost something in that too, like a, a testicle or a toenail. <laughs> something, something disappeared. I haven't been right since that first scream with that. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, you know, right away I was like, okay, this is this is gonna work. Like, I I love your style. What's cool is you didn't just sing the song. You kind of brought your own style to them because, like, there are singers out there that can like sort of verbatim almost do a a, a you know a mimic. impression yeah an impression of like another singer but you brought your own style to them which i thought was cool because i've always been one of those guys that just like i'm way more interested in original music than i am yeah. covers and i like if covers I do a cover, if they're done yeah. right you know, or if they've got a little bit of something that's different in them you know maybe right. it's it's a rap song that's turned to metal or a pop song that's it's it's turned to disco like it's got to have something that actually catches your you know your attention um and no, that's what i tried to do like, because no one else is ever going to sound as good as an original artist doing a cover mm-hmm. so if you're going to do one you might as well do something different that no one's ever quite heard or well, you gotta put your own flavor on it or light or yeah yeah so i was really excited about that and i'm like i had heard a dno song i think it was uh, uh it's that it's like the last song on uh, one of your records it's like uh it's more it's, it's more of a rock song oh uh dishonored dishonored i heard dishonored and i was like man sean can sing like <laughs> this i i love your style your tone oh thank you man thank you you, you have you have a particular style where you kind of you grip grip the mic close to the top you almost kind of cuff the mic a little bit and you sing into it and you get that sort of almost like a megaphone type effect in a way Mm -hmm. um and it creates a little bit of distortion but it's you know it's it's something that i've just learned over the years and and i mean i've been singing for a, a long damn time now and uh i've gone i've taken some voice lessons before um i've tried things i mean I know at some point we are going to do a gear rundown and, and being a singer, we don't get to be that fancy that often, but with trawl, I actually have some gear that I, I, I specifically use for trawl. Um, it just, it fits better. And uh, I've just learned over the time to use me as a person and an instrument to do different things. So I, I had to bring some of that into the, the fold and try to, um, just try to differentiate myself. Um, like I, I've yeah. told a lot of people that for me, I mean, a lot of people know I have two bands, but for me, devil's night out is my slip knot. Whereas trawl is my stone sour. I, I I'm not comparing right. myself to Corey Taylor, but I am comparing my music to, I have the heavy aggressive stuff. And then I have the stuff that's a little more laid back and I don't have to necessarily be so psychotic and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Which I forgot to mention this before, but when I was in Fifth Freedom, we, uh, our band and Devil's Night Out played Hollow Bash. Yeah, shout out to shout out to Coop. Yeah, um, we played Hollow Bash together, and that was the first time I had actually got to see Devil's Night Out, and I was thinking like, man, what a hell of a front man! Like you just literally from <laughs> the first note to the last note, you were just like all over the stage, just losing your mind. Like, gotta put on a show, my brother. Gotta put on a show. You know me. <laughs> I was like, that dude has some energy, man. And that was what I re- remembered most of all. Um, and I was, it just stuck with me. I'm like, dude, I had, I had no idea because for all the times we had run into each other in the past and cross paths, I didn't know. I I had never actually seen you sing and be a frontman, so I was like, "Yeah, dude, you blew you blew me away." So that well, is thank that you so much in my mind for like three thank years you. before that. So well, and it's funny because like when you and I first kind of started to talk at Blockbuster, my brother-in-law and I were trying to start a band. And funny story about that is when we were looking for more members one of the people we had try out for drums was actually TJ, my current drummer in devil's night out. And oh, yeah. like he jammed with us, I want to say once or twice. And 
it wasn't bad. It just, I think my brother-in-law and I were not looking to go the direction that TJ was going, like the way he wanted to, to kind of write music. So, and honestly, like that band just kind of dissolved. Like we never really got going. Um, we had like three songs written, I think. And it, it, it was just something that we couldn't get the right pieces in place. So I'd never yeah. really had an opportunity to sing in front of people um, or even really let people know, like I had tried and passed, but like my own self doubt got the the best of yeah. me and it really kind of shut it down. Cause I was, I'd been in a few bands like um, you know, one of them way back in the day was called Asriel, um, which is again, another, uh, another connection I have with the bass player and the guitarist of that are actually in devil's night out now. So, you know, okay. I, yeah. I, I have all these connections that kind of just came back around full circle. And uh, I, I just, you know, that... I never had the right pieces and it never got to the point where I was able to let loose. Um, I did do some yeah. guest appearances with friends bands. Like I jump up on stage and sing like a verse or a chorus with them, but it was nothing major. Um, but that, that Hallowbash show, I remember because you and I were both sitting at our merch tables, respectively, and we were talking. Yeah. And I think, I think we traded, I want to say, traded I, shirts. I think, no, I think I gave you a shirt and you gave me a CD, if I remember yeah. correctly, because yeah, that's the way I got the Hellfire. And... But I mean, oh, yeah. We, yeah. We, we sat there and talked and hung out the whole night. And like, I remember coming off a of stage and just seeing you look at me like, no shit. All right. No shit. All man. right. That was awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> super cool, man. Um, yeah, that, that was that was really memorable. And so that stuck with me. And you know, when you were like, "Hey, you know, I want to try," I'm like, "Man, it would be so cool to have a front man with that kind of energy." And then after hearing you sing, I'm like, "Dude, you just like this to I'm me." I'm blushing. Just like, Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the pieces the pieces fell together so well yeah they really did and it was better than i could have ever imagined because i you know i really couldn't have guessed who you know who might fill that role i did, it's you know a very a, a good singer's hard to come by so well, i'm just thankful um <laughs> but, uh, it's way too kind man way too kind well and it's funny because i remember that first practice like you can ask kara i was shitting bricks that's the i mean i was so nervous because and i knew like in my mind i was taking it as i'm jamming with a friend and even though i was really forcing that in my head man oh i was sweating bullets driving over to that jam spot i was i i probably sang them bones and coaches like 12 times on the way over there. And it's only a 30 minute drive. Like I had it on like triple speed in my car. I was doing everything. Uh, and yeah. I was sweating bullets. And then like we got in there. And... I had no idea. I had no idea. Cause you're like, you're always super cool. You're like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. Well, and that's because so, like, I tried to put on a little bit of a, 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 an air of like air on the side of like laid back, like, yeah. But I would do, I, cool. I was fucking shitting bricks the whole time. I'm like, man, I, I want to come <laughs> I in and do that. I want to do this right because I want to I want to jam with you, but at the same time, like if this is an actual project that could happen, like I I want to put not only my two cents in, but I want to put a whole three fifty in. Like I want everything I got to try to get into this because I think it's got a lot of potential. Knowing that you were kind of the brainchild behind it, um, I, I I wanted to try Thanks, my damnedest to get into this. And if you if you would have told me that first practice, like, you know, thanks for jamming, man. We appreciate it. But, you know, if you want to jam again, that's fine. Um, but you guys didn't. Like, you guys were like, holy shit, that was awesome. And I'm like, wait, what? Wait, what would you say? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really blew me away. And I was like, okay. And actually, that first practice, we started writing Running Home together. Well, that's like, the thing. So, like. I think the first couple of practices, um, you know, Tom and I had a few riff ideas and we were, you know, we had like basically what we thought were two songs, but we didn't have any obviously lyrics or anything or we we're structurally, they weren't super sound yet. And I was mm -hmm. like, Hey, what do you think about this? And you're like, I think, 
you know, 10 minutes later, you were like kind of sketching out some like a chorus and then Mm -hmm. you're like hey do you mind if i uh just try something and this is like yeah the first literally the first time you jammed and and we're like yeah go for it and you wrote the chorus of running home right there yeah Yeah, first practice well that's it's anyone who knows me my writing style like the way i start to write songs is i look for that chorus i find the chorus and i write what i think the chorus is going to be you know what the music's saying to me, what I need to say for the music, you know? So running home had this very sexy vibe and this very like <laughs> almost urgency to get home and be with the, the, the person you want to be with. And uh, like just hearing that chorus, uh, I, I had it, it literally, it snapped into my head and I just started writing down in a notebook and I was like, okay, okay. You know, I got this and, da, 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 da. and I listened to it a few times and then, you guys kind of like stopped playing the song. It was like semi-structured. And I was like, hey, do you mind starting that again? Like, I'm going to try something in the chorus. And you're like, yeah, okay. And we did it. And I could see like Gary almost like stopped playing. I remember that. Like he was going, and then he kind of like slowed down. And then he like remembered what he was doing. And and <laughs> we kind of all connected off this weird chorus that was literally, I'm running home and we're gonna <laughs> do it to the break of dawn <laughs> which which is funny because you know in in funky music like that's kind of the it's kind of the tradition to make a song that's sort of suggestive or sexual it just happens with funky music right so well i mean it's funky just, music sex the first thing you kind of think of. <laughs> right exactly it's if you listen to seventies funk or like you know oh, Funkadelic yeah, or dude. Parliament or James Brown or any of that stuff, it's like it's just exudes that you know, kind of it sexual. No, energy. It's just it exudes sex. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes sense that maybe the first song that we come up with kind of has that going for it. So, <laughs> well, and, and, I mean, I had a, I mean that first practice. I'll be honest, I had the time of my life. Um, it was fantastic yeah, to come in there and see what you guys were doing. Even if I wasn't going to be part of the project for long term, like I was super excited to see like the ground floor, the beginning steps of something that I knew, even if I wasn't going to be a part of, was going to be big. Um, j- just talent wise, people wise, and I knew musically you guys were going to just be like a very solid group of people that were going to be writing some pretty damn good music. Um, I just got Thanks, lucky man. enough that you were like, hey, we kind of liked what you did there. Um, do you want to come back for another practice? And then, like, Let's do it. you know, it was like, what, the second or third practice? You're like, hey, we kind of want you to come sing for us. And I was like, yes. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was trying to hide my exuberance. Like, when you guys asked me to be the singer, like, I literally wanted to pee myself and start screaming like a five-year-old girl who just got a pet pony for her birthday. Like I was like, Oh my God. Yes. And you were like, yeah, yeah, I think I could do that. I could yeah. move some stuff around and, uh, you know, yeah. And that's always the thing. I, I, dudes are dudes, you know, I was like, trying not to fucking sound like a fucking little girl, man. I was like, Oh my God, they asked me. And I said, yes, this is so awesome. <laughs> so from there, we basically for about a good solid four months, just basically wrote songs. Um, I think we had probably a good five or six songs in the first four months that we, yeah, that we wrote. And, uh, I remember, you know, a few, few bands in the scene were like kind of poking at us going, you know, like, when are you guys going to be ready? Like to play some shows and, you know, this kind of jam slash, you know, turning into a band that's writing songs. And then, you know, you got some other bands going, Hey, when, when's this thing yeah. going to be played live? And I mean, a lot of people so, were poking um, us, man. A lot of people were like, let's go. Like, we want to hear this. Like, what are you guys doing? Cause we had let out some snippets. We're like, all right. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, we're just like Hold, taking our time a little yeah. bit, but calm your tits, yeah, calm well, your tits. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Division North, Justin, uh, Justin from Division North had reached out to me and he was like, hey, we got a show at Empire coming up. Um, do you guys want to play like a debut set, like an opening set? And I was like, yeah, I think we could probably do that. And 
I think it was about eight weeks out. And I told you guys, I was like, Hey, you think we'd be ready in about eight weeks to play a show? And everyone's like, yeah, I think Mm -hmm. we can pull it together by then. And we, we just kept at it. And I think like, like I said, we had about six songs for our first show. We say we had 30 minutes, but I'll tell you right now, it was like 22 minutes. minutes. <laughs> yeah, and, but I mean, we, we made a sounder to try to just kind of break up the monotony. Like, we, I, I mean, kind of step back a little bit, but you were the one that came up with the name of the band and the logo of the shark. And from that get go, when you showed that in that little band chat thing, because originally it was just. Seth, Tom, Gary, Sean. Like, that's all I saw in my thing. And then we, we were talking and we were kind of messaging each other back and forth. And it was, it was very much like that new car feeling. Like, you're excited. You want to touch all the buttons and roll the windows up and down a bunch. <laughs> and we were all just talking so much at that point. And we were kind of like, well, what the hell are we going to call ourselves? Like, what, what are we going to do? And you were like, I have a couple ideas. Like, can you give me a day? And we were like, yeah. And like the first thing you came up with was trawl with that friggin' shark in the, the triangle. And I think everyone was like, that's it. Like without a question, we all were like, mm-hmm, right there. Yeah. And I, and I labored over that for quite a while. I tried, I tried a hundred band names easily. And I tried cause um, I haven't mentioned this yet on the podcast, but I'm also a graphic designer. I design show flyers and band merch and logos, and I do album art for bands and things like that um, on the side just for fun for my own band and for and for my friends out there. Um, so I had tried like so many different um, combinations and bands. Every name I looked up was like a band on Bandcamp that broke up in 2007 that I'd already had the band name, but it was out there as another band. Right. So I had a heck of a time. I knew like some of my favorite bands are one word band names, mm-hmm. you know, Primus, Tool, Deftones, Rush, um, Loki. It's very hard to find a one word band name that isn't taken. Well, not um, only that, but you got to find that right word that kind of catches the attention and really, you know, encapsulates what they're expecting to see like you know primus yeah it's got this weird almost like you're not really sure what you're gonna see but when you see it you're like yeah that makes sense yeah that really does that's what that is so and it's hard because before anything is established it's hard to really immortalize a feeling of what it is and i and i just when i saw the word trawl and i came across i searched i looked you know what does it mean it's obviously like a trawl net that you would pull behind a boat to catch fish or all sorts of different, uh, you know, sea life, but also, you know, kind of fundamentally it means to search, you know, you're searching for something, Mm -hmm. you're trawling for something. So I thought, okay, like we all search for different things in our life, whether it's, you know, meaning personal meaning or, you know, a loved one or whatever it is. Like there's, we're always in constant search of something in life. And whether it's, you know, just friendship or music or a a style, something to hold on to. So I was like, trawl, that's something that like is universal that people could get behind. But I also love the idea that it kind of ties into, um, you know, the shark and the shark's always kind of trawling too, because it's, you know, trawling for its next meal. It's always hungry, baby. So (laughs) it's always hungry. And so I just love that idea. And I, you know, it seemed like it was a quick process, but I was like laboring over it for a while. And I'm like, Hey guys, like, what do you think about this? Yeah. <laughs> and I threw it out there. And luckily you guys were like, this isn't garbage. That's cool. Like, you no, guys we, are cool. I think we're all <laughs> excited like... about it, man. Cause it, it was something that I think to collectively together, we understood what was going on there. And we all said, this is cool. Like we, we all were like, especially that first shark logo, we were all like, fuck yeah, sharks. And like, we started joking about street <laughs> sharks and, and, and all kinds of crazy stuff. And like the band chat, reggae shark. yeah, reggae shark. <laughs> I mean, the band chat turned into just us posting pictures of weird shark stuff. We found all over the place. 
oh man we had so much fun with that and and so it just kind of became this thing and probably within that month or so we started kind of coming up with that idea for a car chart on yep which was totally sort of born out of the whole shark idea absolutely yeah that i mean that came about because tom was showing us i can't remember what song it was but tom was kind of messing around with the song <clears throat> excuse me and uh he was playing it. yeah tom was messing around with uh he was actually playing stir it up by bob that's Arnold. right that's right and he was he was trying to show me how to play this Bob Marley song on bass, which I love reggae bass. It's great anyway. Yeah. It's just I love the feel of it and the bounce of it. And so I'm like trying to play this part. And then all of a sudden it kind of morphs itself into this like different sub rhythm that I was working on. And then I was like, hey, Tom, you play this. So I like gave him this sub rhythm that I was working on. And then I played a counterpoint to that, mm -hmm. which ended up becoming that weird counterpoint that we've got throughout the whole song right well and, and the lyrics for me like i just i felt like this was a song that was absolutely about a shark like there's no question about it it had that feel of it's like lurking just and yeah sneaky. just in the shadows in the seaweed underwater it sees what it's going to eat it knows what it's going to eat and just hearing the rhythm you guys put down and and the, the the point counterpoint kind of guitar bass you know riff and just feeling that literal like reggae riff that was hidden in there it just it had everything to come up with that you know shark song and it was funny because it was like i want to say it was like a week before that you gave us the the logo and the name and and that just it stuck in my head so much that as soon as we started writing that i was like this is the shark oh, song. Yeah. This is what's gonna make this is <laughs> everything make sense now to people. And and I think it, I honestly I think that it does. I think a lot of people still um still find that song in many, many playlists and, and stuff like that. So I think it kind of became like the troll anthem or at least like the first, you know, kind of anthem yeah. for us where people hear that and they go okay i get what these guys are trying right to do. well and it's um, funny because that's the song we always close our sets with for the most part it's it's one of the last one or two songs and it just kind of got there because throughout our set like i'm not really personally for me like i can scream and i can sing but i try not to put too much screaming into troll because i want it to be less of something that's you know aggressive super heavy. yeah i mean yeah I, I love super heavy stuff, but I didn't want to bring that to this. I wanted this to be something a little bit, you know, a, not a little bit. I wanted it to be very distinctly different from a, a, my other project. And with yeah. that, that card. And so. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> basically, if you if you've never heard the song about three quarters of the way through the song, Sean lets out this ungodly, crazy scream <laughs> that changes the entire landscape of the song and you're just like wow that just happened well not only that and i love it be if you watch if, if anyone has seen us play live you know what i'm talking about and if you haven't seen us play live let me describe to you the way the song goes just to help out so through the song the reggae beats going you can hear this song on spotify itunes all that stuff but if you listen to the song you can hear there's a build-up and if you watch seth throughout the whole song and even when we first started playing it seth has this shit eating grin that i don't think could get any bigger even if it was on the biggest great white shark in the world seth is just ready and he knows it's coming and you can see like his eyes they're starting to sparkle his cheeks are just getting sore from his smile and as soon as that that part <laughs> hit seth is another monster another shark on the stage because he just lets loose too we all let go there, there's no inhibitions there, there, it's just go for it and that's that that scream comes out and it's literally just a it's just something that i think all of us on a on a almost primal level kind of connected on and we were like hell yeah <laughs> That's why I think it's cool because you don't scream a whole lot. So when you do, it's kind of this like cool catharsis that like it makes sense and it like it really, you know, stands out 
above everything else because you know it's it's not happening 24 7. yeah it's so it's not I every song i mean there cool. are some songs i do scream in now but i i think we're, we're kind of finding more of a uh like kind of more of our own style where we're still getting that funky bass rhythm. The guitars are doing, you know, their thing, the drum. And, and I'm kind of this in between where if it starts to feel heavy, I can bring it even heavier or I can keep it lighter so that it's, you know, it may not need it. The song may have enough, you know, bones to stand on that. It doesn't need somebody being aggressive. Absolutely. We ended up a few months later, we played a couple of shows and then we, recorded Carchardon at the Halo with Kevin Billingsley. Shout out to Kevin. Um, he's an amazing engineer. I think he's a, just a super awesome dude. Um, he's easy to work with, and he really knows how to bring the best out of everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I had such a fun experience. Um, we recorded that one, and then fast forward about... Um, I'm going to say six months later, we recorded Vertigo. is another really fun song that i get to slap the bass and be really funky on and it's uh i think it's like probably what maybe the third song we the uh, second or third song we wrote um i'm gonna say it's maybe i think second. it's the second because i want to say we wrote running home and then the next practice we kind of somewhat finalized running home and then we started working on vertigo because i know light speed was like vertigo. number three and then Carchardon was yeah, number and then four. Carchardon. Yeah, so at this point, I think we've got a solid 10 pack of songs. I think we have like 10 songs. 10 or now. 11, yeah. We're, we're up uh, there. And we have a few covers kind like of that. hidden in our pocket that we, if the occasion calls for it, we'll definitely bust out. Um, I'm really hoping that not a lot of people want to hear Cochise. Um, but at the same time, I really, <laughs> I kind of do want people to check it out and see if they, they like my version of it. Um, it, it's definitely not. Well, that's the thing. It's a, it's a tragedy. We've told people about, you know, them bones and coaches, but we've never played either of them live. So people are like, "What are you guys talking I, about?" And you know what? I, <laughs> I I'd love to. I think when uh, when this this whole thing blows over, I think I think I would be willing to give that damn song some 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 stage time because I think it'll be, um, I think it'll be fun. I think a lot of people will enjoy it. Um, I know I'll enjoy it. Um, hopefully I don't blow out a testicle again, you know, <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I'd love to put that in the uh, set list. I know we, we, we cover, uh, out of the black by Royal blood. Um, and a lot of people have, that's a fun, have, have enjoyed our version, our take on that song. Um, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite yeah, covers one, I've done in a long time. That one was, is really fun. We actually, we were playing it almost every show for a while and then we didn't for, I think the last like two or three shows and when we were at live at two one two, shout out to Al Moore. Yeah. Um we uh we're just about to get off stage. We were the last band of the night and it was a cool night. Like all the bands were, were really cool to us. We uh closed out the night and people were like, You gotta play one more and we're like, Okay Yeah, and we kinda stopped and we looked, all looked at, at each, each other, other like do we have <laughs> one more? Like what the hell are we gonna do here? And uh, can we do all right? So that and that's one that like it has a lot of changes. It took us a while to get that one. We fought it, man. We definitely fought it hard, but I think we we've got that, our own. That version. song is a bitch with some changes. <laughs> <Don't doubt>. Yeah, <laughs> um, and we finally got it, but we're like, all right, we haven't dusted this off in a while, but we actually pulled it off. Oh, well, somewhat reasonable. And you know what? It's and, it's all uh, about having fun again. You know, I, I think that song, trust playing it. I know for a bit, Tom was like, you know, I used to love this song and now I hate the damn thing, but I think we, uh, 
we all have a, a better appreciation of that song. And it's definitely something that has bonded us together because we all definitely fought that thing tooth and nail to just get it yeah. somewhat down. And uh, it, it <laughs> definitely took some time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've played about 20 shows now. We were out there basically for about the last year and a half. And we kind of got to a point last fall where we took a little bit of a break and we wanted to write some more songs. We wanted to kind of continue to hone our skills. And in the process, um, our friend and guitarist Tom um, kind of realized that the band thing wasn't something that like he loves to play guitar. He's one of those guys that like, he would practice three times a week if we were like, hey, you want to go down to the jam space? He would be like, yep. I'm I don't there. think he needs us, man. He, I think he just practices all the time. Like, I think yeah. he's just, he's in the pure love of playing guitar. He loves play, to play guitar. He's a great guitar Fantastic. player. Fantastic. I think he's one of those, he's one of those guys that, like, like you said, and I've dealt with this over the years, that, you know, your own self-doubt kind of gets in your way like you've said same thing with me it took me a long time to kind of believe in myself a little absolutely bit. And it's been really it's been really cool over the past you know almost two years to see tom you know start to get more confident and believe in himself i've seen him grow as a guitar player so much over the past two years and he's become a damn force to be reckoned with he's, he is he's a great he is literally player. one of the one of my favorite guitar players uh by far um i haven't known him as long as you have i mean i've only known him in the time that i've been with trawl and i i definitely can see a lot of growth and and like he is you know leaps and bounds from where he was when I first started. Like at first he was just kind of yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to play guitar. One. Like now he's like, Hey, check out this riff. And he's playing something. And it's like, wait, how the fuck did you just do what? Like, wait a second. Yeah. And okay. And then you, we start writing a song and it's like, I don't know where the hell he came up with that, but I like it. I like it a lot. And he, and he kept, you know, kind of honing his style and he got a lot louder. He got some different gear and all of a sudden, He's louder than the rest of the he's the, loud the mix. Like I remember at first, <laughs> at first being like, "Hey, turn up a little, yeah, bit, turn yeah. up a little bit," and then he was just like, "Now it's like Tom, turn down a little bit." Yeah. <laughs> I want to I want to so, hear Gary, um, the guy who doesn't have a volume knob. Like you're, you're blasting out Gary and the drums. <laughs> yeah. So it's been an absolute pleasure, really, um, playing you know with Tom, but he kind of realized. I like playing guitar, but I don't necessarily love to play live shows. He doesn't necessarily love the whole everything else that comes with being in a band, which I can absolutely understand. It is. It's not for everybody. It really it's, isn't. It's not for everybody. It really isn't. Um, and, you know, we've all had the ebbs and flows over the years of loving it and then being kind of fed up with yep. it and yep. getting to our breaking point but then the music to me always makes me fall back in love with it again and it's kind of one of those things where you know you put up with the tough times to you know persevere and, and get through you mm -hmm. know and to get to get to the good times and those amazing gigs that we all work so hard for that are one in every 10 or two in every 10 gigs sometimes you know um but that's not for everybody. And he just kind of realized, um, he, he preferred, he, he'd want, he wants to move on, uh, for now. And I totally support him. We're, we're great. I think friends. we all do. And, I mean, honestly, from, from, again, I haven't yeah. known him as long. I, I want Tom to succeed in whatever he decides to do more than anyone I've ever known. Cause Tom is a super nice guy. Um, just a phenomenal guitarist. Um, and, and, it, it it was definitely kind of uh, a, a little sad that he wanted to step away, but we all, you know, collectively yeah. as the, the four of us are there in the room together. And we, I mean, we've been doing this for what, two years close to. Yeah. About two um, years. Yeah. And, and honestly, we all understood where Tom was coming from. He had talked to us a couple times and he's like, I, you know, 
I still want to be friends with you guys. And, I, and all of us were like, why wouldn't we be And like, you're, you're a great dude. And yeah, of course. I mean, we want to yeah. stay friends with him and, and we still have been, um, uh, he's, he's a fantastic Absolutely. guy. Um, he still wants to be a part of Troll, um, just more behind the scenes, which, I mean, it's not a bad thing. He already knows the songs because he was there for writing all of them. Um, so, right. Absolutely. You know, yeah. He, yeah. You know, he, his contribution to this has been great. Um, you know, we, we definitely thank him and I'm excited that we'll still get to work mm-hmm, with him Me too. as far as, you know, I know he wants to help as far as, uh, you know, helping us with gear and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm excited. Yeah, for you that. know what? Maybe um, we'll sneak him on stage once in a while to play a song. You know, who knows? You know, yeah. he, he's still going to be yeah. around. He's still a brother of ours that we've we've you know sweat with, and his energy is unmatched um, because he's a brother of ours. I mean, we've 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 done this with him for a long time. We've practiced hundreds of times. You know. Yeah. So right now we're at a point where we're sort of, we're gearing up for the next phase and the next chapter of Trawl. Um, right in the middle of all of this, we wanted to have a nice farewell show for Tom. As I mentioned earlier, we had to, we had to cancel that um, because of COVID-19 and everything mm-hmm. going on. Um, everything kind of came to a screeching halt. So literally everything. Have, yeah. S- literally everything, our entire world. And, you know, Hope everybody's doing well out there and staying healthy. Uh, we love all you guys. And, you know, we're all right now kind of, you know, biding our time and kind of preparing for the next phase and just trying to survive and live and do do everything that we love to well, do. And a lot of, I know I've spoken to a lot of other, of uh, my musician friends, and I'll tell you, man, speaking to these guys and girls, um, the local music scene is, is, is hungry right now. I know guys, they're still jamming. They're still writing stuff. They're kind of sharing recordings with each other. Um, there are some hungry people out there for, for shows. Um, I know personally for me, I cannot wait to get back into a jam room and, and get back onto a stage to perform, um, with both my bands, if not more, if other people like, I know, um, I've guest appeared on a couple CDs, um, for a couple people. And I just can't wait to see those guys back on stage. And uh, when this thing blows over the the local music scene and probably local music scene where anybody is, is going to blow up. I I think a lot of people are going to be out more shows, um, there's the bands are going to come yeah. back with such a ferocity that it's, it's almost going to overtake the national music, you know, scene in my opinion. I think you're right. I, I'm excited to get back. I, uh, I can't wait for, you know, things to get back to normal and we all have, you know, we're just working on all these ideas. Troll has like two or three new ones that were, working on that like we were right in the middle of developing when all of this mm-hmm. went down um and i will mention that we've already we think we found a new guitar player um we're not going to announce quite yet um but we are working with somebody who's learning the songs and i'm hoping that you know once once uh you know things get back closer to normal that we're going to you know, pick up where we left off and work hard to get back where we were before and be able to get back out there and play shows and, you know, record more songs and, and just, yeah, just kind of uh, go further, further. Than uh, ever, it's, yeah. it's hard because this whole situation is just, it's so scary for a lot of people. And I know like personally for me, I still have to go into work right now. Um, it, it is a little nerve wracking to think like, you know, you could catch something that, I mean, could potentially kill you. It's it, not a definite, you know, death sentence, but um, I, I've heard a lot of people, it's, it's, yeah, it's scary. very scary, but I've heard a lot of people talk about certain things that, you know, if, if you do get COVID-19, there's, there's a chance that if it worsens, um, you know, people who have gotten 
really bad and had to have ventilators and, and stuff like that. Like when they come out of it, like they have 20% less lung capacity and lung function, which, you know, for me, that's huge. That's scary because my lungs, they may not be the best. I I used to smoke. I, I, I've quit smoking, uh, going on three or four years now. I've lost count at this point. Um, but I know, Losing 20% of my lung function or lung capacity, that's huge for a singer. So, um, yeah, man. and, and, and not, that would I, not be I, I wish this on nobody. Um, I, I wish and pray that it goes away sooner than later because I know a lot of people are scared. Um, and a lot of people just want to get back to a normal life, a, a, a sense of normalcy where there isn't you know, gloves and masks and you have to stay at home and there's no toilet paper and there's no bread and there's no eggs. Um, and I, and I hope that the, the tide turns soon and we start to see that, um, kind of rectifying itself and, and the end of the tunnel kind of coming up with a nice bright light that shows a lot of positive stuff for the future. Um, yeah, man, I agree. And, you know, I hope that it only makes us stronger as a, you know, humanity and everyone is a little kinder and a little cooler to each other and that we can all just like basically appreciate life more because we, you know, have faced the situation. Yeah. And I just hope, you know, everybody out there is staying safe and doing well. And I, I'm i positive. I think, you know, we're going to get through this if we, if we, uh, you know, wait this thing out a couple of months to die down. I think, uh, you know, we're all going to definitely through. believe that too. Um, yeah. so, I mean, that got us to this point. Um, so yeah, Tom has, has, a, has stepped down. Um, again, like you said, just to reiterate, we do have somebody we're, we're kind of talking with and working with. Um, we are excited at some point to announce who it is. Um, we don't want to do it just yet, just because we want to, kind of make sure we have kind of a a set path in front of us to, to, to be able to say, this is who it is. And you can see us on this date at, you know, this location, uh, venue location. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, that brings pretty much the story of trawl, uh, the inception and that's the, that's the story. So so far far. we're, we're continuing. There's a lot of empty blank pages that need to be written in the trawl story. So, um, Absolutely, man. So kind of to bring it back up a little bit, um, Seth and I have been talking, and we, we have been getting some feedback. Um, we, uh, I know uh, a couple people have mentioned to me, um, last episode, my, my uh, voice was fairly low. So uh, I'm trying new headsets. Um, we're doing the best we can with what we've got. So if you bear with us, you know, just understand we're still very new at this um, and we're trying, <laughs> um, but uh, we are going to be doing some CD and track reviews coming up here soon. Um, so basically yes. we're going to go through and uh, I know Seth, you said to me, uh, you do have a couple tracks you're interested in reviewing. Um, we plan on getting those, you know, kind of set up in the next few shows. Um, and, and onward. Uh, I know I have a CD that I'm going to not necessarily review, but I'd like to talk to one of the members of the band to just try to kind of get what they went through their process, what they did, how they did it, who they worked with. Um, and just kind of see another band's perspective from a recording side. Um, it, it's very, I, I, I've had a lot of fun doing recording, um, for both bands now and uh, I'm excited to hear what other people think and, and what they went through. So we do plan on doing that coming up soon. Um, if you do have any recommendations to us, like uh, you're in a project or you have a friend who's in a project that you um, would like to get our, our take on, you can email us at trawlband at gmail.com or you can contact the band page or, or one of, you know, Seth or I, um, through Facebook Messenger and stuff like that, and just kind of give us a link or uh, tag us in one of their posts and, and, and tell us, you know, hey, I want you guys to check these, you know, this project out. Tell us what you think, you know, and, and we'll probably put it on the podcast at some point. Um, I mean, it, 
we're not yeah. we're not going to be too harsh. Um, we're we're big fans of all music, except for country. Um, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> Just I had to sneak it in. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, but no, we are a big fan of a lot of music, and and we are excited to to see what other people are doing. Um, it may not be heavy metal. It may not be funk metal. It may not be whatever. But we're definitely interested in checking it out. Um, so if you do have a, a recommend, yeah, we're both. I think both of us are just you know fans of the scene just as much as we're musicians. So oh, yeah. I'm always listening to everything that if something gets released locally, I try to have it on my radar. I just like to basically listen to everything if I know about it. I, I try to give um, everything a I shot, man. The same yeah. way, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. but if you do have a recommendation, hit us up at trawlband uh, at gmail dot com. Um, and if you have a question or comment for us, uh, cast a line at trawlband at gmail dot com. Um, we love getting questions. I know we have a few questions kind of we're we're, we're saving for later episodes. Um, we've also kind of decided to do a um, a thing. Uh, I think we were trying to figure out what it was called earlier. Um, call yeah i think you like it would be called kind of like a radio tag yeah or something like that so we're but... looking for people um to, to try to help us add some um flavor and spice to the, the the podcast um so we're looking for something along the lines of like hey this is you know sean and you're listening to troll cast with sean and seth let's dive back in or you know something you know if you have a good shark pun or something oceany you know we, we'd love to have that stuff um if you do have one of those uh you could submit it to trawlband at gmail.com and in the subject line just put you know listener radio tag and uh we'll we'll try to splice those in to uh sections of the the show um like I said, we'd love to have people on, whether you're in a band or not. Um, if you're just a fan or a friend of ours that, you know, you want to um, do that, we'd love to have it. We'd love to put it in the uh, the episode. Um, and uh, Absolutely. I mean, that's most of what I have. Uh, I know you gave a few shout-outs today uh, in today's episode. Um, I actually have a couple of shout-outs that I want to I give out. Um, First off, this is being recorded on April 8th of 2020. Um, one of my very good friends, Anthony Sweet, today is his birthday. Um, he's a big, big uh, supporter of the local scene. Um, he's also working in the COVID-19 unit in Maine Medical Center. Um, I want to give him a, a wow. shout out and say happy birthday, brother. I love you. I, I hope you're staying safe. And um, he actually started a podcast called The Sweet Spot that um, he mentioned us today, too, which was funny. Um, I had actually written nice. in my notebook that I wanted to give him a shout out because it was his birthday. Um, but, Anthony, uh, happy birthday, brother. Um, hope you have a great day. Um, I, I can't wait to, happy birthday, can't wait to see you again. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to Chris uh, Show Brown um, of the band Stillborn Condition. Uh, he has a podcast called I fucking knew it. Um, last night he <laughs> had me on as a guest. Um, I had a great time talking with him about, uh, spirituality and, uh, stuff that may, um, uh, a lot of people don't know necessarily about me. Um, but he's a great guy, fantastic conversationalist. And I wanted to give him a shout out and just say, thank you. Um, I love you as well, brother. I, I, I hope you, uh, you had fun or as much fun as I did last night. Cause I had a blast. Um, but if you get a chance, both of those gentlemen did start podcasts kind of based on Seth and I being idiots and saying, screw it. Let's do a podcast. <laughs> let's do this. We have no we idea have what we're doing. No idea. Do um, I know our first podcast, you and I were like, <laughs> I don't think we can go 20 minutes. And uh, looking down now, we're we're an hour and a half in, man. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I just want to give a shout out to those two guys uh, and, and thank them for their support. They, they've definitely um, hit me up a couple times and just messaged me about the podcast saying that they love it. Um, that's pretty much all I got for this episode. Um, again, if you have any questions or comments, trawlband at gmail.com. Um, if you do like what you're hearing, hit that subscribe button. Um, if you're on a platform that does uh, ratings and reviews, Give us some five stars. Tell people what you think. Um, 
all the five stars do help us. They'll actually get us um, noticed and, and spread out to more people so we can, we can spread the, the good word of crawl. Um, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Thank you everybody for listening. And, and I'll, Thanks yeah. for listening to us. Uh, tell our and just stories. Babylon, and man. Just talk yeah, about we're, we're having fun. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have messaged us. They, they, they thoroughly enjoy what we're doing. Um, it definitely has given people a, an avenue to kind of, forget about the craziness that we live in right now um so you know thank you and you know for giving us this chance um yeah thanks for encouraging us to keep doing it um appreciate that absolutely we're we're getting better we're getting better as we go we're trying damn it (laughs) (laughs) um i'm getting more comfortable because like i'm you know not traditionally a uh very good at interviews so um i think i'm getting a little better as we go yeah oh definitely man without a doubt um so yeah i mean if you like that what you're hearing you know hit that subscribe button um and until next time my name's sean and and thank you for listening to trollcast we'll see you next time